and it's so nice to have you here with us this morning on Technique Tuesday and today we're going to be talking about a pattern that I made up. It's a simple ribbed workout hat for both men and women and this is what the hat looks like and it is made out of the lovely Bravo yarn and we have Bravo yarn in the small skeins and the larger skeins but with this hat I went ahead and used the larger skeins to knit. And I still had some left over, but um, one skein gives you plenty of yarn to be able to do the hat. So what I love about this um, one by one ribbing for alpaca is because alpaca is so drapey. And if you look at the yarn and you pull it out and you just take a look at it, it's very drapey and very soft. So because it's so drapey like that, you want to give it some structure by using stitches. And I like using one by one ribbing or two by two ribbing, but the one by one ribbing gives you the most stretch. Okay, and then my favorite way to knit this yarn when I'm doing a hat is to use small needles. So I started the, the brim of my hat on number two needles. And then I knit like three and a half inches and then I switch to number five needles and I knit the top part because the top part doesn't have to um, help stay on your head. Um, it is squishy and feels good, but the brim part, you want it to maintain its structure so that it doesn't get so loose that it's falling off your head or not staying put when you're working, right? Um, so that's why I love the one by one ribbing and men especially like it, right, Jim? Oh, yeah. <laughs> my hubby, my son, Brandon, um, everyone that I know that I've knit, made hats for in the one-by-one one ribbing for guys. I mean, I always use it. I don't put a lot of pattern on it because you guys don't need it, right? You think it's kind of fussy if it has too much pattern, right, Jim? Yeah. Yeah, so anyway. Oh, let's do an audio check because we got another microphone. We're still yes, playing with the microphone. we're still trying to get our voice, um, the volume control working um beautifully for you so let us know if you're hearing us okay and i know there are a lot of you at home and need things to do so making these simple ribbed hats are not stressful and it is fun but you don't really have to think about it and i think i made this in about two days right jim including coming up with the pattern you made it on our anniversary i did <laughs> I'm knitting my on our anniversary, <laughs> but oh, we had a nice walk, didn't we? And yeah. I made Jim some cookies since we weren't, normally we would go out to eat, but we've been choosing to stay inside. So um, we made a nice big pot of clam chowder and then I made peanut butter cookies and we enjoyed those. So that was fun. And then we took a walk with our doggies. We love our doggies. So also here, you'll notice that I have this little tiny baby hat and I thought this was easier to see. It's the same exact pattern as this hat, only it's in a lighter color so you can see how the ribbing is done and how the crown is done. And this is using a lot less stitches, but you can see this method of using slip slip knit and then knitting to the marker and knit two together. Um, you can make this wonderful lines on your decrease sections and it looks really nice and the ribbing just kind of flows out of those knit stitches there and so it's a really great way to do hats and you can do it with any number of stitches all you have to do is split the stitches in four and then you would do um, one round where you're not doing decreases so you're knitting the knits and purling the purls and then the other round you would be going ahead and starting out with a slip slip knit and then knitting until two stitches before the marker and then you would knit two together then you would slip your marker and continue on again until you get to the end of the round um, so these hats are really easy to make and it's multiples of four because you have four stitch markers so you can change it into any um, any multiple of four will work for the hat so you guys be creative when you're doing these hats if you're doing for loved ones um, know that you can ch change the sizes up and down all the way to a small little baby hat to an adult uh, medium size adult hat which is what I wrote for the pattern knowing that because it's one by one ribbing is so stretchy 
the baby hats are fantastic because you know how babies their heads grow really quickly and so having a nice ribbed hat that'll just stretch into eternity and it fits them for a long long time which is fantastic <laughs> so because you know some people find ribbing a little bit t tedious but I love the end result and I love the functionality of it I don't know there's a lot of things to be said for uh, one by one ribbing and sometimes what I'll do is I'll do one by one ribbing for men and then do two by two ribbing for women and you can use this same exact rib, uh, method for two by two that you can do the same thing as one by one you just guys got to think outside the box and use the pattern in whichever way that you want knowing that that multiple of four will give you the correct um, amount of stitches to be able to do the de decreases at the top of the hat right and that's going to be a free pattern this week we're going to release be it free pattern friday and you guys know that this is one of our new yarns and i know um that you may think oh she's going way overboard on using this yarn but i'm not it because it's a new yarn i'm actually trying to give you some patterns that will work with it and this yarn is a light worsted weight so the pattern will work um for any yarn that is uh either a light worsted weight or worsted weight yarn um so and that's that's the bravo yes uh-huh and it is 100 percent baby alpaca made in peru a uh, totally fantastic yarn. So I wanted to talk about, I thought maybe today, because I have this simple hat, and we're always talking about um, different ways that, you know, different problems that knitters might have that I can help them, or maybe I can make them think about something a little differently, or maybe I can um, show you something that you never knew. So I was thinking with this hat, first thing that I wanted to mention, a lot of you out there will start these beautiful hats and all these projects and you'll have a brim that is not very stretchy. So you can see how this brim is nice and stretchy, right? Well, I'm here to tell you that if you use any cast on that you like, your favorite cast on, and you go up say one needle size, maybe two depending on how tight you knit, it will make the cast on bigger, hence stretchy, so it won't be too tight. So I was sitting here, I just wanted to show you, here's the number four needle, see how tiny those are? And then here's the number 10. So this is a large difference in between and you don't need to use that big of a difference, but just casting on with a needle that's a little bit bigger gives you stitches that are stretchier because they're bigger stitches than the rest of your work. And so just keep that in mind when you, you beginning knitters out there are learning these cast on and you're going, oh, I don't wanna learn how to do a new cast on, that's too hard to do. And I can't get any help from yarn shops right now because a lot of yarn shops are closed. Well, guess what? You can just use a little bit larger needle when you're casting on and then knit right off that needle onto the needles that you're gonna be knitting with. And then you'll have a nice stretchy cast on. So um, that is something to think about. Now you guys, every week we have a prize. And this week I was thinking that I would offer some chow goo needles because I love chow goo needles. I love the fact that they don't have memory, meaning the cords don't coil up into this wad of coils that get in your way <laughs> when you're knitting. And so these are fantastic needles. And I was thinking you guys can help me choose which one you think you guys might like. It's a 32 inch number eight or a 32 inch number 10. And I was just curious to see which one you guys would like most. And so that I kind of got the idea of what kind of weight of yarn y'all are still knitting with right now. <laughs> so you vote on that and then you help me choose and then you can also enter to win by posting comments in the comment section you can let us know what you're working on maybe what you like where you're from what pattern you're working on we love knowing what patterns you're working on because we get grand ideas like peggy mowry she is the one that gave me the idea for last week's Technique Tuesday and was making the little dollies, little Izzy dolls. And I have um, completed six of them now, so I'm working on my merry way. And they're basically knit in a tube, um, and then they're just embellished a little bit with either, uh, I don't know, 
you can either use darning thread or a little bit of your yarn to make the eyes for little tiny kids or the, for the kids over four years old you can use the plastic eyes and do what I did and use crazy glue to glue them in place so they don't fall off um, whatever works for you is great uh, so now I thought maybe we could take a look at so you're a beginning knitter and you're knitting right and you realize that you're doing a ribbing pattern such as this, like a knit one purl one or a knit two purl two or a knit three purl three, and you have accidentally purled when you're supposed to knit. I was wa wanted to show you how easy that is to fix. So if you guys are out there trying to learn how to knit and have kind of messed up on your work, how to get it back on track, okay? So I'm gonna come over here, Jim, and we're gonna take a look. I've done a, little, a couple little swatches. And these were just tips so that since they can't go in the yarn store, yes. how they can keep I going. I was just and thinking that, you know, for our knitters out there, sorry, this is kind of a tangled mess right now. Let me see if I can untangle it. It is not my needles that are causing the problem at the moment. It is the yarn getting twisted around the different needles. Yes. So if you look at my three by three ribbing here, I have purposely messed up on these so I can show it to you. Now when you're knitting along and you realize that, oh, I made a goof up way down there. You can even go all the way down to here. You can go that far down to fix it and very quickly. So let me show you how easy it is. So first thing that I like to do is I work to the spot where I have the problem right so you just work on over to that spot where there is the problem stitch and I like to fix one problem at a time I think I'll use this one. this one the dog chewed on that's why whenever you see me I try not to use wood and I try not to use things that they can eat because my little stinkers like to chew on stuff anyway let's slip the stitch off here and then you just Bring it down to where that purl stitch is that should be a knit. Okay? And I always like to work from the knit side, meaning you see these V stitches here. When I'm fixing a problem, I will make sure I'm working from that side. If I have a problem here, I will just turn my work and fix it from that side. Okay? So, now here I am, I've laddered it down to where below, one stitch below where that problem was. Then I would take my crochet hook and insert it into that stitch. Now some people drop stitches. Remember, if you think you've dropped a stitch, you should look for a loop like this. And if you see a loop like that in your work, immediately grab one of those safety pin stitch markers and just put a safety pin in it to keep it from unraveling all the way. If I re unravel past my um, cast on edge, I, ha I have a really hard time getting that to look right. So um, it's important for it not to ravel all the way to the beginning. All right, so here we are with our ladders, and you can see that my left hand index finger is stabilizing those ladders in the back here. See right here? That's the finger I'm talking about. And I am going to fix this problem starting from the bottom. Each of these are rungs on my ladder, and I'm gonna grab from underneath the rung, grab that stitch, and bring it through. Now one stitch has been fixed. Go underneath the next rung, and pull it through two stitches and onward and onward and onward all the way up to the top now when I get to the very top always remember that your stitches are loops do you see how they look like horseshoes if you look at it let me show you do you see how that looks like a horseshoe right there that is your stitch and what I want you to do is take your needle and put that left hand leg in back. So the right hand leg is in front and the left hand leg is in back. And that is a correctly mounted stitch. If for some reason you forget what I just told you about the correctly mounted stitches, take a look at your work of the other stitches that have not fallen off the needle. You can easily see 
that here is a horseshoe, that right hand leg is in front, and that right hand leg is in front, whether it's turned into the back this way or this way, the right hand leg will always be in the front. So now let's go to the next stitch. You can see that we have fixed that one stitch that was a purl stitch and made it, turned it back into a knit stitch and you can't even tell, right? So then you would take the next one next to it. So we're fixing one stitch at a time. We're not gonna try and take them all off at the needle at the same time because otherwise your tension, your, one, your first stitches might be really big and the next stitches will be smaller. Uh, all kinds of problems like that can happen. Once again, I'm gonna take my index finger and stabilize in the back, and I can even use a crochet hook that's maybe a little bit bigger. Let's try this one and see if it works better. And using a crochet hook that's about the same size as your knitting needle size um, really helps you too. I think it's a good thing to do. And my left hand needle takes that stitch and pushes that left hand leg in back and the right hand leg in front. Now I'll go ahead and knit that stitch. And on I go again, take the next one off. Okay, now I have my index finger is stabilizing those ladders in position. And once again, I am going to make sure that I have not split the yarn and walk up the ladder from the bottom up. And then you can say to yourself, well, how do I fix a purl stitch? I learned how to fix a knit stitch. How do I fix a purl stitch? Let me show you something simple. There you go. See how that's fixed? It's no longer messed up. Let's turn this over. These are purl stitches right here. Do you see how there's a mess up right there? Watch this. Ta-da. That's a mess up. But do you see that I turned it to the knit side? So for you beginning knitters, you only need to have so much information at once before you hit overload. So always turn your work to the knit side and fix it from the knit side. Eventually, you will be able to fix it from the purl side. But for now, it's much easier to just go ahead and go up those rungs of your ladder from the bottom and then through from the bottom and then through, pushing that left hand leg to the back. Now, let's take a look at that. See, ta-da, all fixed. <laughs> it's totally awesome and that's the hardest thing that our beginners have a hard time trying to figure that out. Now, some people will put their work down and then they ask themselves, well, how do I know where I am? All right, so I pick this up, and right here is my working yarn. That is the last stitch that was worked. So all I'm gonna do is transfer those stitches, needle tip to needle tip, over to that left-hand needle till I have my last stitch worked in my right hand. And now I'm gonna be knitting from the left-hand side over to the right-hand side. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish this pattern. And then I'm going to show you what can happen, oops, almost got off pattern there. Yakking too much instead of paying attention to what I'm doing. All right, so when I get to the end of this row here, you know, a lot of beginning knitters will get messed up because they, ha they have their work and they go, whoops, uh-oh. <laughs> How do we fix that? Right? So the first thing I tell the Begin to Knit students is grab a smaller needle than the one that you knit with. So I have these nice little Brittany 10 inch or 12 inch needles and I am going to kind of watch this. Do you see how if I flatten it out, they line up in a row? Look, this is very confusing. How do we tell? Maybe we we'll want to put that one on there? No, we do not. <laughs> <laughs> what we do want to do is flatten it out. Do you see how it's flat like that? And then again, I'm going to take that stitch and just stick it right on here any old way that I can get it on here. Even if I, I catch some yarn, no big deal. 
just put it back and do you see how I'm bracing with my thumb and my index finger I'm bracing each stitch so that I'm not pulling it and making it ravel down and drop down into my work I'm actually stabilizing and I'm not paying attention to whether it's mounted correctly or not correctly okay so I'm just putting the work back on the needles so that I can take a look and see what I've got all right then when I did it do you see how I worked right toward my work that is great if you're gonna go ahead and fix your stitches as you're knitting so I have here this is a knit stitch right and then this next stitch is a knit stitch and you can see the right hand leg is in front that's perfect all right and the next knit stitch that right hand leg is in front so I would knit it do you see that I can knit off this smaller needle and it's not going to affect my gauge because my gauge is made by creating the stitches when I'm creating the stitches with my right hand needle so don't you guys be afraid to work right off that smaller needle because it's not going to ruin your work now look here's a purl stitch and the right hand leg is in front ta-da that's fantastic we can work it the next one the purl stitch is in the front on the right hand leg that's perfect now I'm hoping right here is a strand of yarn do you see the strand of yarn that's caught let's fix that strand before we go ahead and purl that stitch now let's look here that one is mounted correctly the right hand leg is in front ah here is a knit stitch where the right hand leg is in back do you see that we have two choices from here we can do number one knit through the back loop or we can correct the orientation of that stitch and then work it for you beginning knitters i really believe that you should um, correct the stitches and then knit them eventually you'll be able to knit them through the back loop and not confuse yourself but when you're first beginning to knit um, it's important to keep yourself one new thing one or two th new things at a time not too much at once new things because what will happen is you'll get frustrated because you won't understand what the heck is going on and then you won't be able to fix it do you see right here how I have that strand of yarn stuck on there let's fix that one do you see how I fixed it and took the strand and fixed it now this last stitch is a stitch that I'm gonna slip but if you look it's a twisted stitch because that it's twisted around here so let's fix it and then let's slip it because I have that slip stitch edge and that is back on the needles and they're all mounted correctly so that is how you would fix that so if you're a beginning knitter and you have problems with your knitting maybe those few little tips will help you learn how to um, get your work back on your needles and help you figure out how to do a stretchy cast on without changing your cast on just knitting with a little bit larger of a needle um, now let's take a look at our work here Jim and see if we have a winner for last week do you remember who the Kabasi plus um, what the winner of the Kabasi plus was do you remember um yeah it was what the color? aqua ah aqua you guys like aqua mitt okay let me look and see who was a winner this is for Kabasi plus and this yarn is a cotton 55 percent bamboo 16 percent 21 percent elastic and eight percent silk this super nice yarn and I made a little baby blanket for Lauren just recently and the chevron blanket turned out really cute and those dolls uh, too right you made the little yes, dolls yes and I, I made the little dolls out of leftovers and this is uh, the winner today is um, Christy Hardy Christy you won this lovely yarn you're gonna enjoy knitting with this so Christy if you could just get in touch with us and give us your address we'll get this out in the mail to you that'd be great thank you so much Christy and then again you guys don't forget we have a knit club and uh, we have um, 
If you like learning new skills and want to be challenged, every month we have a project that we're working on and it's totally fantastic. And we also have this group. It's called a VIP group. And the VIP group is free to join and you can get help and advice from other knitters as well as if you have a question, we try to monitor, the, monitor it for you as well so that if you have questions, we can answer your questions as well through Alpaca Direct. There's about 2,000 people in it now. So. Yay! That's totally fantastic. We have some great knitters on there, and it's really funny to see the little cute little comments and jokes and the beautiful projects that are made on there. So if you're a crocheter or knitter, um, it's a great resource for you to go to. And like I said, it's free to join. It's totally awesome. And let's see here. So for this week, you guys, don't forget to post comments in the comment section. This is for the Chow Gu Red Lace. I don't know if any of you out there have used Chow Gu. Have any of you out there used Chow Gu? These needles are fantastic. They're the Red Lace needles, and they have no memory in the cords. So when you knit with them, the cords lay nice and flat, and they're totally fantastic, and they don't get in your way when you're working. So they're totally fantastic. And the two sizes that I was thinking that you guys might like is number eight or number 10. And you guys choose, and next week we will give the winner whatever size you choose or think that would be great. So in short for today, we have this lovely hat that is coming out on Friday, and it is a hat for both men and women using our Bravo yarn. And um, it's a great little pattern for those of you that need nice work hats for your work um, loved ones that'll stay on your head and are nice and stretchy. Totally fantastic. So they'll fit a bunch of sizes. So if you're making gifts for men, these are the best hats. Matter of fact, this is a gift for Mark. Um, this hat is going to one of our loved ones that is, it was recently his birthday. And so I am sending this in the mail to him. So I hope he enjoys it. I'm sure he will. It's totally fantastic. And he's a wonderful person. So I love giving special gifts to our loved ones because, I don't know, it's pretty cool. I think it's neat. And then um, for those of you that are just learning, I hope that by learning how to get your stitches back on your needles and how to identify whether a stitch is twisted or is oriented correctly on the needles. I hope that helps you. And then just to maybe have this simple suggestion of using a little bit larger needle for your cast on to be able to have a stretchy brim on your hats um, is a fantastic idea and I've used it many times and I hope that helps you too. So you guys have a great day and this next Tuesday, what are we gonna be talking about? Oh, we're gonna have the Odyssey Shawl Knit Along by Hohi Locatelli. I always And that started now, so they we have the yarn, if, um, the Malabrigo yes, Shawl. Um, some people have already um, started it and it's using the lovely Dos Tierras yarn and it can be found on our blog, right, Jim? Yep. But the official start of the knit along is on April 1st. Mm -hmm. So it's coming up here. But Tara's already knit it, so we'll have yes, to show it next week. That's right. Oh, it's beautiful. Anyway, so you guys have a great week. And oh, I know what else I wanted to talk about next week. Okay, so amongst all my other projects, I have knit my hubby. That's what I made him for our anniversary gift. I made him his very own set of alpaca gloves, right, Jim? Yep. <laughs> With full fingers and everything. And um, so I was excited about that. So I was going to talk about that next week and maybe how I made my um, in between the fingers a little nicer. So I wanted to give you some thoughts about that. So you guys have a great week and stay safe. And I will see you next Tuesday.